Are there any additions, corrections? I have one addition. Uh, I was served papers this morning on uh, uh, BMR Investments is uh, suing the county over uh, our uh, uh, denial of, uh, of uh, I guess, permit or whatever. So I want to put that on as item C for uh, under item C note. Anything? No, I have nothing. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Okay, and I will second that. It's been moved and second further <coughs> discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. County Attorney General discussion. Good morning, Mr. Walker. Good morning. As far as this goes, I have no involvement that I. I don't want you to ask me questions about it. I don't want you to discuss it with me or anything, because that's them and McVail. That's nothing to do with me as a private citizen or county attorney. So you have to get your advice from someone else on that. Other than so that, you're basically saying that you cannot defend or whatever you want. Well, to I, can, or, I can. I can. But you, you want me to? <laughs> you know my advice is going to be. Well, here's so, what I'm saying. Yeah. We have to hire outside attorney. Mm -hmm. Stan's telling me that we have to vote on that. Mm -hmm. So do we hire outside attorney or do you hire outside attorney for us? You do because I have a conflict. <laughs> okay. Well, we do have assistant county attorney. You know what his advice is going to be? I mean, we looked this over before we did it, and I had talked to you, you, know, you guys and said if there's going to be any controversy, I won't even file it because I don't want to get involved in something that's controversial, you know. And 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 I would I would I wouldn't have even gotten involved in this in the first place as a private citizen if I knew it was going to be controversial because I had talked to you guys about it beforehand and said, listen, if I file this as a private citizen, is it going to be controversial? And of course, there were three board members then, and the answer was no. We don't see any controversy with this. I wouldn't have even filed it if it would have been controversial. You know, I lived out there. They asked me about it. They, I said, I'll talk to you guys. I'm not going to do it if it's controversial. So, you know, that's kind of why we're in the position we're in. I wouldn't have even filed it if I knew it was going to be controversial. <coughs> I mean, when I filed it, I thought there was no controversy whatsoever. I truly did. I mean, I, it was just like every other TIP district that's ever been filed that's, that hasn't been controversial. No, this one goes on forever. Of course, there are some other ones that go on forever, too. But Yeah, and like I said, I wouldn't have filed it if I knew <clears throat> it was going to be controversial. Well, anyway. So, yeah. Well, let's talk about it under item C. And we will again, yes. And uh, I mean, uh, we cannot have any action this morning on it. Uh, but uh, like I say, we'll discuss uh, where we go. Well, County Attorney General's discussion. <laughs> you know, just the routine stuff. There's nothing really major or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Anything on the property tax? <laughs> I see you have one. That's the properties and oh that's the emails about so oh okay that's what that is yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll go down there and check on that why that's not changed so. okay okay now do we have a meeting at 10 o'clock with the suit with the architects it's supposed to be yes right yeah. here yeah okay uh the question came up and uh speaking of that uh if we're it looks like we're going to run way past noon hour uh can we order in pizza and keep on working, have a working lunch noon hour meeting and pay for the pizza? As long as it's not more than, what, $3 or whatever that figure is per person. Yeah. Yes, you can. I will only eat one piece. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll get cheese pizza. <laughs> no meat. No, that's not a problem. Okay. All right. I have nothing else. I don't either. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, BBC project update. Um, 
construction going on at both sites uh, starting tomorrow. There will be a progress meeting that will be held every week at 9 o'clock at the Henkel trailer at BBC. And it's just for that one project. Starting on or about the 18th of September, which is also Wednesday, we will roll in a progress meeting for the Osage plant at 1030 at that job trailer. So anybody's welcome to come to that. Again, 9 o'clock at the Henkel trailer, 1030 at the Waffleshaw Shot trailer. Um, you guys are welcome anytime. Basically, the idea behind these meetings will be to, uh, all the engineers will be, that'll be me and my structural and mechanical electrical guys. And the idea is, is to face-to-face uh, -face solve any problems that we're having without the exchange of correspondence, which takes a lot of time. And then also to identify if there's any potential issues on timing uh, with manufacturing items and things like that. So um, it'll be a way to keep us up to speed a little bit more on the down and dirty construction side of things, which I will then update you the following week on again. Um, as far as physical construction goes, uh, over here at BBC, um, they've got uh, two holes open up for two different structures. Uh, they're going to start building those at the end of this week, and then they're going to start putting some water main in. So that one's going along real nicely. Um, at the wastewater plant, they've got the big hole opened up for the ditch work. Uh, they're going to start doing the forming and concrete rebar for that towards the end of this week. That's a pretty big tank. My guess is it'll take them, you know, a couple weeks to get that formed and rebar before they start putting concrete. So that'll be a little bit slow getting that tank up to how big it is, but uh, things are going along well over there too. Um, we haven't had any significant issues come up. Um, we haven't had any equipment issues so far, so things are going real good right now, which is nice. It's always bad to start off with that, so <laughs> we haven't done that. Um, and that's about it. Like I said, the um, progress meetings will start at 9 o'clock tomorrow, every Wednesday, and you're welcome. Ankles trailer. Ankles trailer. Do you guys got any questions for me? Well, from a financial standpoint, I have yet to receive any pay requests, which means that you got the get out of jail free card yet for okay. another couple weeks. Um, so I think you guys are probably be sitting pretty good from the financial side of things here. So it look, looked like that timed out pretty well. Who issues those get out of jail free cards? I'd like a couple. Well, they're imaginary. I got one right here in the schools right now. So. schedule in or, or, or so far I mean or a little ahead or no, no I think we're probably right on uh, Luke Porsche from BBC had asked me for a scheduled update um, I've got uh, a request into Henkel and what I like to try to do in the beginning here is get revised schedules about monthly um, after the first three or four months I'll know how far we're behind us by what kind of stuff but right now to get started is kind of tough so when I get that revised schedule I'll be sharing that BBC they will be sharing out to you guys as well so Right now, everybody knows the end dates, and everybody's working for them, and we're on track. So that's all I got. If you have more questions on um, electrical use, let me know. No, that's very good. Thank you. It, right. uh, it, uh, uh, that's going to help considerably. Okay. And then I'll be working with uh, um, the city of Osage here <clears throat> probably over the winter time. The idea is, is that originally we came up with... Uh, um, you know, obviously it takes money to operate this pre facility. And we came up with our initial estimates and forward that stuff to BBC early on. Um, now that we're starting to get our equipment submittals in, we know the actual horsepower and stuff like that, we're going to refine that um, operation maintenance estimate because that's a straight pass-through cost to the BBC that will be built in directly. Uh, I'll work with the city on that, um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll kind of just keep give a draft to BBC. You guys get copies of all that stuff. Um, and we'll just try to keep them guys up to speed as best we can. So I don't want that to be a big shocker to them when it starts up. That's all I got. Okay. All right. Thank well, you. maybe I'll see you guys tomorrow. Maybe not, but I'll see you next week for sure. Okay. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, item four: Discuss placing courthouse question on the November fifth ballot. Uh, we later today should be getting some fairly firm numbers, about 98% firm is what they estimate, you know, on uh, uh, 
with the design and so on and so forth of uh, the facility, what uh, they believe the thing is going to cost. Uh, I think it's time that uh, we have to make a decision one way or the other. I mean, time is money, and uh, it's uh, basically the city has elections on the 5th. Uh, I think we may only have to do an extra uh, precinct or two. More than that. More than that? that that's rural and not? Yeah, this would be a countywide. You right. would also be required to have it from 7 in the morning to 9 at night. Okay. The normal city election is from noon to 8. So, are you expect the cities to have to pay for that extra time? No, it's our ballot. Yeah, I mean, I think they, it's sorry for their part of the election, but yeah, you're going to have an awful long day. Those women have to be there at 6 yeah. till 9, and well, <coughs> we have to do it. We'll have to use machines, um, and it'll be, ex it'll be considerable extra cost for all the programming and everything. And Bring the women in for training. <coughs> We're looking at eight, nine thousand. Well, a normal election is probably around five. Okay. I mean, city will, cities will pay part, but you'll have a few precincts that aren't. So you probably have maybe three more. I would say, Stan. Okay. It's not a lot more, but you. But I don't think it would be fair to expect the cities to have to pay those extra hours for. Because of that other no, no, I don't. Uh, I don't disagree on that. I'm not asking that. And they would probably mention that too. I think. But I'm sure they wouldn't budget for that extra. Can we do that? Because the last time when we talked about this, we could not, as the board of supervisors, put that out for a vote. It had to come back. As a reverse referendum, we, we've we were gotten, told we could not do that. Well, but we've been told, I think, by uh, John Daniels that uh, we we can't. Or uh, no, it was uh, Jeff Heil mentioned that. Well, uh, I guess I'll I'll check, see with his, I'll I'll check, check with the legal. Secretary of State. Check with the Secretary of State because we were not allowed last time. We had had we had to have the public hearing to borrow the money, and then they had to present the. Reverse referendum. Reverse referendum on that. <clears throat> well, not only check with them, check with uh, legal counsel. If we got one. <laughs> what do we do on this? Let's put it on then for the next week. Then. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, Tom. Joel, can I ask one question? <coughs> if the supervisors approve the, put it on the ballot November 5th, I'm missing something. Won't that probably satisfy the taxpayers out there and there won't be a reverse referendum come forward because they won't, they will get their wishes or the reverse referendum. I, am I missing something? Well, I know what you're saying and we had that same discussion probably a year ago or whatever it was, and that we wanted to get the public's opinion on whether we should go forward with a courthouse or not. Um, but then we were told that as the Board of Supervisors we could not ask that question because that was like a straw poll or <clears throat> carried no weight. It, we had to have our public hearing and then that had to come back as the reverse referendum. You know, we weren't asking for a referendum. It was the, the public had to request a vote. Yeah, and there has a, been some confusion on this whole thing. Right. I mean, that we've gotten different and, uh, advice from different. And on the way that we, I can't speak for Stan, but myself, I mean, we were always been trying to figure out how we would pay for this. Well, we kind of came to the conclusion that possibly it would be. For, Local option sales tax and revenue from the windmills. So those would be revenues. And revenue bonds are not subject to reverse referendum. But general obligation bonds are. But 
And then again, as you stand has explained a number of times, general obligation bonds probably have a one or two percent less interest rate. So if we can still do the general obligation bonds at the lower interest rate, but we probably still pay for them in local option sales and TIF revenue. So everybody wins. Um, I think one of the things that uh, really gets to be, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, confusing might not be the right word, but uh, uh, it, there's some uh, question on uh, the amount of debt that the county has, and uh, apparently, uh, you know, we are the fifth highest, uh, carry the fifth highest debt of any county in the state. Uh, yet again, when you take a look at your property taxes, um, debt service is very low. And a matter of fact, next year there will be no debt service because we will have paid off uh, uh, the county services building. And uh, that's what debt service is going for. And so uh, when there's something like balance, uh, yes, we're borrowing uh, $14 million or thereabouts in order to put up this pretreatment plant and also upgrade the system at uh, Osage, and yet again, this is not being paid for by the property taxpayers. Yes, it shows up for debt, but it's uh, pass-through debt, and uh, I feel very comfortable with pass-through debt. I mean, this is the way that uh, uh, you, you grow a county. Uh, you have to have growth in order to uh, uh, to try to get uh, new housing, to try to get new people to live here, to work here, uh, uh, to, to uh, keep your schools operating and so forth. And so uh, uh, revenue bonds, uh, to me, when we have a source of outside revenue beyond the taxpayers, this is a good thing. And uh, uh, so I will stand by uh, many of the decisions that we have made, yes, Jim? Joel, the, the, the two places that you were talking about getting money from don't require a vote, so why does not make the decision to go ahead and just do that and move forward then? Why not save the county money by getting general obligation bonds, pay for them with those two sources of revenue, we get the lower interest rate. Those require a vote. No, we, no, we no. can set that, we can set Only that for hearing. And unless there's a reverse referendum. So why not proceed that way then with those? And not worry about whether or not it's be on the ballot, just proceed that direction then. The only do the, reason do the public hearing, you're saying, and then yeah, the, the reverse. Yeah, the reverse yeah, reverse yeah. yeah. Like you up. did before, because if you're discussing two sources of funding that don't require that are already there that wouldn't change anybody's taxes, and you guys have have promoted that extensively with your material then it would seem like that nobody would have any problems with it, that you could just move forward. And the question from the audience was, if there was a need for a vote, then it could still allow the public to proceed with asking for it to be voted on then. Well, the reason, so, be, the reason behind this again is, um, and I do try to stop at uh, some of the watering holes in the morning, the coffee clubs, and visit, and uh, uh, some of those people have said, uh, you know, I'll probably support a new courthouse, but I'd like to be able to vote on it. I just really want to have a public vote. And, and so, yes, it might cost us $5,000, but if this is really what the public wants, uh, that they have their say that way. Uh, but remembering what happened a year, year and a half ago, I think the public has to tell you to put it up for a vote. You can't decide yourself to put it up for that a vote. That was the way it was last That time. seems to me when we said over there a year and a half ago right. that it went well, through the process. Well, that's what we asked now to have the uh, auditor research to find out. Because that would have saved uh, two years of time if that could have happened two years ago. Well, Mark sat right beside me and said, no, you guys cannot do that. Yeah. Well, I guess it's good to get clarification, but I think that, I, I just wondered because if those were money was already there. People I've talked to have asked that question. If it's there, why not? But but still, people want to vote. But does it have to come from the public? Yeah, to yeah, initiate it or not? Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. I just wondered if you and okay. uh, auditor test will get a hold of like Jeff Heil also because uh, 
uh, bond companies, bond whatever, and because uh, uh, Jeff felt that uh, we could do a vote. So I want to, you know, find out what where Jeff is coming from on this. Uh, yeah, I know, Stan, but I think I would take the advice of an attorney. Over yeah, I understand, but uh, but if Jeff finance. says if Jeff says we've done this in ten other counties, mm -hmm. then we better make sure that the, the attorneys. I mean, you know what I'm trying to yeah. say, yeah. because if they've been doing it in other counties, yeah, makes you wonder. Then it makes you wonder how they're doing it. That's right. that's all I'm trying to say. No, I, I agree with you totally on the advice of an attorney. Don't get me wrong. We're going to take a whole lot of heartache a year ago if we could have done it that way. You know, just throw the vote out there and have it. And no, I agree the public wants to vote. I'm just kind of surprised well, that all I'm of a sudden this, that, this time around it would be okay and a year and a half ago it wasn't okay. A year ago. A year ago, whenever it was, wouldn't be that's okay. My yeah. You go back 15 years ago, they voted on a jail. And they turn around and get it without another vote. Well, they didn't revenue bonds. Yeah. Well, they didn't. That doesn't require a vote. No. So I'm, I'm just asking because it seems it's confusing for people to understand. You know, know right. this time opposed well, to the last time when the jail was the done. Here, yeah. The referendums all failed. I think the only place that it passed was in Osage. Correct. Well, then the board at that time decided to go forward with it anyway, and they decided to use the revenue of the local option okay. sales tax. Which didn't require a vote. That was their Which option. we can do too. <coughs> but there's more. Pe there's people still grumbling about that procedure the last time too. I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure, Jim. I mean, whatever mm -hmm. happens here, there's going to be people grumble one way or the other. I, I, but again, I'm just saying for this particular subject, it's confusing for people to know <coughs> vote or not vote. So it'd be good for everybody to know from some legal person or the yeah, state. Absolutely. Is it absolutely, can be you just putting on the vote ballot or is it go to reverse referendum? Good for clarification. Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's what we better do. We'll probably better talk about that next week again. <laughs> <laughs> we have a meeting to set our agendas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can anything else on the ballot? Uh, so next Monday's uh, holiday, so we'll have to get all that stuff done this week. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. County Engineer Broom. Morning. Good morning, sir. This is for the subcontractors now. More, a little bit more three quarters way through the rock run, so we're making some good progress there. Um, we're doing some miscellaneous pipe work right now. We're up on uh, we're north of the shop and put a triple triple pipe in there yesterday. Get some grout in there, so we're still doing some miscellaneous things yet. Um, we did order the pipe for the Echo and Four Sixty Fifth. A little yes. bitty ten foot box slash bridge thing. We're going to put a rail card in there. We've got it ordered. Um, Did you find rail cards? I've got some. But I'm still... FEMA is a four-letter word, I think. <laughs> um, it starts with that. Well, right. <laughs> so, um, I don't mean that to be harsh, but they don't move as fast as I don't want them to. <clears throat> and I, can't make them move any faster. They're coming in today again. We're going to try to work on our emergency work projects so we can get that stuff processed. I'm still waiting for an answer on a project number on the two structures that are still closed. Um, I'm still waiting for an answer on Lime Kiln Road to see whether or not they'll help. They'll help us rebuild the, the waterway. But they haven't given me a strict answer on whether to be whether to help reclaim on private property or not. And I don't know that they do. But I'll ask those questions today when they come back. I'm expecting a couple answers, but uh, I'm not guaranteeing I'll get them. So at any rate, I've still got the FHWAER projects to work on too. Um, we've got to process those. That'd be for Highway 105 Turtle Creek Bridge, I think what we're going to have to do this year is 
put a temporary service on those approaches so the winter doesn't, and I think I mentioned that to you guys earlier. So we're getting some of these smaller projects, some the last fault overlays and stuff lined up for fall. Um, so we can get some stuff buttoned up before winter so that the stuff has a chance to settle and then we can go in and put a permanent fix to the stuff next spring. Um, to date, we have spent about $700,000, $750,000 just in the flood repairs alone. And keep in mind that that's money we have to come up with before we get reimbursed. So I've been working on the end report. I think I got it completed and we should be okay money-wise. But I'm still probably going to have to amend the budget just to cover those costs because we've expended that more than what we thought. So I think we'll be okay on that aspect. It's a good thing we've been um, efficient carrying over some money. Um, so <coughs> other than that, that's where we're at. Uh, secondary roads wise. Uh, you know, we talk, we do a lot with rail cars. Would ever there be a situation where we could use possibly anhydrous tanks? If had somebody mm -hmm. approach me about that because uh, there's there's a number of anhydrous tanks sitting out there that they can't use for anhydrous anymore, and, and they're, all you have to do is have somebody cut the ends out of them. And, and then weld them to get a, probably a decent line. Well. I don't know what the wall thickness is on some of those pipes, but I, they, I would expect them to be fairly heavy because they're under pressure. Right. I wouldn't be opposed to those if there was somebody selling them. I, just, I don't want to stick a lot of money labor-wise into to, to getting them and welding them together when the rail pipe have already been welded to those lengths. <coughs> right. And we just order them. I mean, but there's the there's situations where it's well, right where those size pipe what are they are they four foot diameter oh, are they a little bit bigger than that yeah, I mean they've got better hydraulic flow than a than a 48 inch corrugated pipe about the same hydraulic flow as a 48 inch dual wall plastic but the plastic you know right. you can use a recycled pipe cheaper than you can buy a new dual wall so I mean the options are there it's just a matter of getting them better <coughs> fabricated for our use. Well, I mean, <clears throat> it's even like with that uh, LP tank that we got still at County Care. Uh, time we try to scrap it and haul it over, or whatever. I mean, we get very little money out of that. And uh, yet again, like you say, that thing probably has an inch thick. Well, see, that was a rail car at one. The time. rail cars typically run. Half inch, five eighths wall thick. Okay, so that's sort of pretty heavy steel. Yeah. I mean, it don't look like it when they unload them because they're kind of flimsy because the ends are gone. But there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of protection there for for any kind of corrosion or anything else. I mean, half okay. inch is a long time to wear through it. We figure we've got corrugated metal pipe in the ground that's 30, 40 years old, and that's <coughs> 10 gauge, 12 gauge material. So. Yeah, there's probably a use for them as far as recycling them. And I'm wondering if uh, some of these places we purchased our tank pipe from aren't starting to see that because I'm seeing smaller pipe diameters come through on what they have in stock. So, well, it's a good use for them. Well, I mean, you could just pay for scrap price for them. I don't know, do we have anybody in our crew that can cut the ends off? And all them together. Uh, I don't know if I want that kind of liability. <laughs> no. <laughs> I won't let the professionals take care of that. I think <laughs> it can be. I, I know it can be done, and I think what they normally do when they do that stuff is they they may fill them with water to get all the vapors out, and then cut them from there. At least that's one procedure I've heard of before. But that doesn't necessarily drain them. I don't know if they drain them or they try to cut them or still water. I don't know the whole process. I, don't know. I know they got to fill them up with something to push the vapors out. So, yeah. I don't know if anybody else has experience with it. I don't, but... Uh, well, then. So. That's why we're always on the cutting edge. <laughs> the cutting edge of no, recycling. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of paperwork yet. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I 
time we get done, we'll have another episode. Let's hope not. Well, it's what we I don't like all the red. The red tape is frustrating. They're not in as big a hurry as I am. And, and consider the fact that they've got how many counties in this state and other states that they're trying to cover, too. I mean, I know it seems like a snail's pace, and they're, they're under the gun, too. But. So we'll just keep trudging away and pushing as hard as we can. Anybody else have anything for the county engineer? Okay. Thank you, Engineer. All right. Thanks, Rich. Yeah. Uh, Sheriff, you have Should I? Out there at the bridge. I'll do the next week yeah. since it's Tuesday. Out there at the bridge, mm -hmm. that one side. I'll do the work Tip. penny first and then back over here. Like, okay. Yeah. And then September 11th. He's working on that. Ooh, that right. can say I'm done. Yeah. Uh, Again? Oh, my goodness. A little fishing trip. That's the end of course, done. So that's the day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know how long you know how much how long it took to find a eighty one cent bus in an annual report? A long time. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you have people that do that for you? No. <laughs> I don't. Uh, Sheriff Beaver, did you have anything this morning? I don't have. Okay, okay thank you. You guys have something for me here? No. Anybody have any questions? But I don't have anything. Uh, minutes. Uh, we both got them. Uh, I thought for <coughs> just a second, I don't know if they left them in the other room. Just because we pay a lot for publishing all of these things. Uh, in about the middle of it, it says a handwritten check will be presented to Jessica Carson. Can we just eliminate that? I mean, you want to? yeah, I mean, because it, it's basically kind of redundant in one, re re one respect. Uh, there was a question, uh, uh, maybe Jim or Mole can answer this. Uh, uh, when the minutes appear in the press news, uh, apparently they're a lot harder to read than when they appear in the St. Ansgar Enterprise. And so, uh, are you going... Uh, uh, I'm assuming they're being printed by the smallest legal font that it can be. So, you're probably getting the smallest print that legally is required, probably, yeah, to I say... they're smaller now than they had been. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I know that there's a minimum, and I know the question has been asked about the ten point. I think. Yeah, and I think it can be smaller than I think it'd be like seven. So I think it's probably at the smallest that it can be, and that's saving you more money. Right, I know that because uh, we pay over I think ten or eleven thousand a year for uh, publications. Mm -hmm. I mean that's substantial. If you want it, if you want the font bigger, it'll cost more money. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, well, no, I'm just telling you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think it's I, probably. I, understand. I think the I think it had been raised before that could be printed at a smaller font because of the expense, right. and so I think it's being printed at the smallest legal size, which I think is like seven. So the St. Ansgar Journal is probably printing it at ten, which is probably. The other, the other end of it. There's probably a range, and that's probably the high range, and you're probably seeing the low range in the press news. Well, what we could do, and on the end, and I know it's one more line that <coughs> you can also add on there that all the minutes appear online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that. You know, and then you can read them in any font mm -hmm. you want. That probably would be your best disclaimer, probably to put at the bottom, is that these also appear on, on the Mitchell County website. Site, on the Mitchell County website, yeah. I know we do that yeah. in the I guess that would be the same thing to agendas. We've been pretty lenient or generous about sending out agendas. I guess a lot of you people could just go on and get your agendas there. Well, the media. Request. Except for the media. It, except for the media, but yeah. in general, yeah. It's because yeah. there's a list of people that. But and I, I guess I've considered that, but maybe... And not only that, but then that gets them onto the website so they can mm -hmm. find out other information. Other entities I deal with refer you to their website to get the agenda. Yeah. 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 That aren't legally <coughs> needed. The only thing you. on uh, uh, sending them out electronically is, I mean, you can call this uh, uh, 
uh, group agenda and you have them all, so I mean, that's all you ever have to type in is group agenda and it goes to all of these people always and, and so there's no reason to deny them. Uh, no, but there is another way that they can get them. Yeah, no, I, don't, I mean, but uh, uh, like uh, uh, the St. Ansgar School, for instance, uh, uh, basically their uh, agenda is the only legal one that they really have, my understanding is, is posting it on the superintendent's outside door. Well, that requires every day that you have to drive up there and take a look if they have a special meeting. Well, to me, that's uh, that's not being transparent. I've asked before, can uh, you electronically send out a notice that, you know, here's whatever, and they won't do it. They say they don't have the capability. Well, the hell they don't. They absolutely have the capability. It's a matter that they don't want to. I'm sorry, that's, uh, and uh, so if you have to drive up there every day to check the window, I mean, that, that's not a, that's not an open transparency of government either. You should call the ombudsman. <laughs> <coughs> I would, Stan. I, I think for people that are nice questioning about being able to read them, you put that <laughs> on there that they could find them on the website, because I think that's what's happened with the font size is that you've requested the smallest font size probably to be printed in there. I have a, I have a feeling I don't think we have requested or it's, it's just done. It's way. just been done as the smallest one because, because I, a couple years when it changed into the mm -hmm. legal sort that was. I, I think it probably just it went to the small. I think it just went to the smallest that can it can be printed at, which I like I said I think is seven. Mm -hmm. So that's probably what happened. It just went to the smallest size and you probably just have to put that statement every time. Mm -hmm. For people to find them there. Well, I'd make a motion to approve the, the minutes as corrected or amended. Or okay. You call it. Uh, second. It's been moved and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, vote by the block. Aye. Motion carried. Items and note meetings attended. Well, I had a <clears throat> workforce development meeting last Thursday evening, and it was probably one of our shortest meetings, but they have been pushing the Certify Your Skills um, to folks that are unemployed, um, and I think even, I think seniors in high school, and I think it's a proctored test, and you end up with a bronze, a silver, or a platinum, and I think it's mathematics, information finding, what's the other one, um, I forget, there's three different areas that they test you in, and whichever your lowest, whether it's a bronze, silver, or platinum, that's what the certificate you get, and <clears throat> then you can take that it's kind of a certificate saying that you have these certified workplace skills and you can take those to the employers. And these are all the different North Iowa Business Supporting Skill Iowa National Career Readiness Certificate. Um, which kind of even the belts on there. Um, I believe I see some four city, I'm not sure if four city schools, but yeah, I think that they'd like to do is get this going in the schools too. So when seniors have graduated, they could take these tests and they may already have these certain skills that employers are looking for. And we had a gal there from, I believe it was NIAC, and she and somebody had asked her what the biggest problem they are having with workers in the area. And she says, the first one is being able to pass a drug test. Second one is showing up for work. Mm -hmm. And the third one is having the skills when you do show up for work. So what's happening? I guess you got to ask that question <clears throat> because so many of our young folks, I mean, where do we find skills today that I probably and you, anybody that's older, I mean, I grew up on the farm, eight and a half, I was probably raking hay on a tractor by myself, you know. 
not that that great needs a big job skill, but you know what I mean? I mean, well, the operating machinery right. and that. And we used to have uh, industrial art type of things in the schools. I don't know if those are even there anymore. You know, you teach kids how to weld. And they still have it. They still? Okay. But we share a teacher we, with another school. Well, are we teaching kids to be certified welders? I don't think they can get certified. Why not? They send them to NIAC. They go to NIAC. They go to NIAC to do that. Why can't you certify them in the high school? Probably too expensive. They just learn basics, yeah. basic skills, but certified you have to be certain mm -hmm. levels of well, quality. My and son down at Waterloo, he went to work for John Deere. He was certified on the job. Didn't take two months, didn't take three weeks. They went to the lab. They taught them what, how they wanted it done. They taught them how this is how you weld. And that's what they did. You know, I think a lot of these school programs. They, they bought robots and there went those. Jobs. A lot of these school programs to get certified, you have to have somebody who's certified to begin with to do that, and so you have to have. Teacher, be certified. And then it's. You can't mandate for life. Yeah. And teachers don't want to do that. You can't require teachers <laughs> to do that if it's above and beyond that. Also, I would imagine. So that's probably why you can get college credit. And for NICC that. is doing it for McNeilus now. Yeah. Who's doing it? NICC is doing it for Magnelius, okay. and any kid can take those classes online and do those too through Rice Bowl. Well, I mean, I think we're shooting ourselves in the foot with our youth. I mean, they just, they don't have the, there's no way really for them to get the skills that, because so often we worry about them. I know, like, over at the workforce development I brought up before, I mean, this, youth grew or this youth employment thing they have in the summertime well a youth to them is somebody up as far as 24 years old but you can take them out to paint a fence but they can't get on a six foot step ladder they can only paint if they're on the ground you know well we still offer drivers that through the school year they don't know that so but anyway that was this is a nice thing i think if, you know more and you actually got to be certified proctor to, to give these tests. So, but with that, then the other meeting I had last night was uh, economic development, and um, Brendan said that he seemed, would probably be having a dedication in six June of fourteen out there, and it sounded like the CEO Sumamoto was coming or whatever. <laughs> <coughs> got to learn here bowels all over again and, <laughs> and the spec building and the state spill uh, sounds like that'll be up this fall. Well the good thing about it Joel is you know Cronus sits in the third district supervisor so whoever gets to be third district supervisor is the one that has to do whatever so they're the ones that you have. You mean BBC? Yeah, yep. BBC. <laughs> so they're the ones that kind of learn the Japanese and so on and so forth. You and I don't have to worry about it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be interesting. So, something to look forward to, I guess. Then our meeting was pretty much just, and I think I brought this up before, but I think in the future we're going to maybe have our meeting at some of the different industries around if we can make it work out with their schedules and ours. And I think that would be really great so that we can all kind of see, you know, our other industries, I guess. County Conservation was a short uh, uh, agenda, really, and I think they did get things worked out with uh, Bob Muller on uh, property out there. It sounded like uh, the police are making progress. Uh, the other thing that they talked about uh, was Spring Park, and of course, uh, uh, they're continuing to look at that, whether or not, uh, uh, you know, uh, that they're interested or how that may play out. And so uh, that was really the only two things on that agenda. <coughs> and uh, uh, all I can tell you is I've been having a lot of meetings this last week and even this last day or two on... Uh, uh, the special project, and so that's been keeping me very busy, and so that's all I can say about that. Uh, item B, discuss personnel policy. Kind of continuation from last week. 
Well, you know, we talked about the octane channel, um, then the holiday, or not the holiday, but the sick leave. Uh, so I did go online, and there was this one website, and I was going to print this stuff off, and we maybe can talk about this again next week. Eh? But probably about 50% of your companies in, in this country, ones that have 20,000 employees all the way down to, say, 50 employees, um, allow their workers to carry over sick leave. A certain <coughs> amount, but a lot of them pay that sick leave every year. So if you have an employee that has, you know, can carry over sick the county 80 hours and they have, say, 150 hours, well, then you can pay them the 70 hours every year. That way they're getting paid at the rate that they earned it. They can do whatever they want with the money, and they can still carry over those 80 hours. But Joel, employees are not entitled to their sick leave when they leave employment. They don't they're not leaving. We're not talking, but we're talking about employees who don't use all their sick leave. But they're not entitled I meant to vacation. I, I, did, did I say sick leave? Yeah, you said, said sick leave. leave. I meant vacation. Yeah, there's a difference. Clarify <laughs> large yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. They're not allowed to They're not entitled sick to sick pay. But, I mean, vacation is what I meant to say. So, I mean, that would be something we could do. That way you're not ending up with somebody having four or five hundred hours built up or whatever. I don't know if we could have any way that many, but... No, we've got some that are over 200. Over 200? Yeah, they, they carry it over, but then they use it. They use it, they <coughs> use it at one rate, they're using it at another rate. Again. Right. Now stop, 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 right there. Let me finish. Excuse me. Because that is not in people's budgets. That's the other thing. Because say they say they carry over vacation. Or is the department had budgeting that, say that person carries it over, do they take all that the next year? That's not budgeted for. Yes it is. No, it's not. Yes it is. It is not in the new budget stand. You you, you are budgeting two thousand eighty hours at a certain rate. But if they take more vacation, they still they're still taking more. That, that well, money is not in the budget. Yes, it is. No, they're, it's not. They're being I'll argue with you all day long. They're being paid at the rate of whatever that yearly rate is. But if they take more vacation, then it because doesn't. it carried over, it's not in their budget. They, they have worked previously a lot more at a lower rate. It doesn't matter. Yes, it, it, does. it does not matter. That, <clears throat> that is a new question. You, you put in 2,080 hours a year, you're paid so much, I mean, it, it budgeted it for 4,000, but, but then if it's carried over, no, it it's doesn't matter. The year. It doesn't matter. Well, the money goes back. Somebody's going to have to cover them. Somebody covers it, yes. But yeah, is that, is that in the budget then? Somebody's going to, somebody They're didn't. They're going to have to budget more Somebody didn't cover, cover up the year before. So that wasn't, I mean, that wasn't covered the year before. Well, it doesn't be matter. What would be wrong just paying in their PTO? Why is it some people use their vacation and others don't? I don't know. That's their own personal whatever. I didn't have, well, I've never asked anybody. Yeah, I know. Shannon. Does the county still have the EAP plan with Mercy? Mercy Blue Cross Blue Shield, the employee assistance plan? Have you ever had Mary come over and talk to you? We recently had her come talk to us about wellness and the employee assistance plan, and the intent for them. For insurance companies, they view vacation as time a benefit to staff to get away from the job. It's mm -hmm. a big part of your job to do a good job, to not get stressed, to take the vacation. So that's why a lot of companies don't let them carry over all the vacation because they're encouraging their staff mm -hmm. to take care of themselves in wellness and not do that. So she explained that all to us as far as at my current job, they do limit it because they want us to take vacation. They don't want us to be stressed out. They want us to leave. Well, county kind of policy is 80 hours, but we seem to have others that have a lot more than 80 hours. Yeah, so we have one right now that's good. if that comes through, it's going to be 9.7 weeks. And some of it based, ours currently is based on how many hours you accrue. You're allowed to carry over half more. Or I guess do you track it and when they take that other, or they get paid that rate? Uh, I mean, that'd be a lot of that'd be a nightmare. nightmare, right? But that would be something to have Mary come talk to you about the, the benefit of vacation and why you don't want to have a carry budget. Or are they carrying it over with the intent when they retire, they'll get that paid out? 
and get extra or and get, get extra, extra money. quarters. No, they'll they'll take it long seventy wise mm -hmm. to get extra quarters for their mm -hmm. acres. Well, anyway, we've got a policy book. So do we throw that policy book away and do it on a case by case basis, or abide by the policy book? I guess I'd still rather change the policy to where the department head uh, uh, works with their department. I mean, what, if this department head is comfortable with it, that's fine. If this one isn't, that's well, fine. And, and I mean, I happened to see an email that said that we were understaffed. That's why I have all this paid time off accrued. Well, why are we understaffed? There's 17 million people out there unemployed. But then. If uh, they're being denied vacation from their department head because they're not, then that's well, we don't know that. Well, well, but I mean, if they're denied person their vacation, if they no, but what I'm saying is, if that really is the case, and they're hollering that they're understaffed, that you can't take your vacation, well, then there's something like you say wrong with the system, and then we should be uh, asking why are we not having personnel available that you can't take your vacation. Mm -hmm. That, that mean, but that's a different issue than what this. And right, it, it is, Dan. Yeah. I, I know. But, yeah. but then on the other hand, we do have the eight hour limit, and if that's the case, why not just pay them their. To start over for us each year. Each year. And then it's in everybody's I, budget. I yeah, I don't care how we do it. I mean, that, well, maybe that's what we need to do. I well, let's just let's put her on for next week. Let's then. continue this. Let's get. <laughs> okay. Just, and I'll try to. If I can go back to that website, I've tied up a lot of things. And I can print off the website and we can all see the graphics. And they're pretty. <laughs> I'll put them in color too. But anyway. Okay. All right. Item C, paper served. Uh, I do have a comment on this, that, uh, but because it is uh, uh, litigation, we can go into closed session. Uh, wouldn't necessarily, uh, wouldn't necessarily have to. I don't suppose if the camera was off and well, I knew it was <coughs> off and. Otherwise, I, do, I don't want to make a comment unless we go into closed session. I want to go into closed session unless we've got our legal counsel here with us, or at least on speakerphone. Well, we don't have any legal counsel, so. That's right. In that case, let's just Although put it we up. do have legal counsel. When this was first approached and give, given to us, petition. We were told here by our county attorney that we he could not represent the county in this matter and that if we wanted to, we needed to seek outside counsel. So I took that upon myself to do that. And I did contact outside counsel. Well, we really should have voted on that. I'll let that slide. I'll let it slide. But your head was bobbing up and down. Why do, why do we have, like I said before, why do we have an assistant county attorney <coughs> available since the county attorney is? Right, we're paying. Is he going to follow the recommendation of his boss? You got a budget well, there? Well, for, for the same reason, you can't the hire somebody office. else in the same law firm on a, uh, to represent another side. Uh, and if the county's being sued, then by all means, we do need legal counsel because I'm not a lawyer and you're not a lawyer. Put it on for next week. When Joel, when, when do we go to court? Can I make a quick comment? Sure. Get a good counsel, <laughs> please. <laughs> the one I talked to was pretty good because he had experience with these this particular matter. So will you vote now for that legal counsel since there wasn't a vote, or are you just going to keep using that counsel? That appeared to not be an official counsel. <clears throat> well, it, it was brought up that it wasn't voted on by you as supervisor. So, are you going to vote then as him actually representing the county, or just go and keep using him as no vote?
represent you. Well, I'd make a motion because of this. Can we do that today? We put it on the agenda. This is an action item. We can't do an action item. Put it on item. for next week. Okay. <coughs> put it on as uh, higher legal counsel for the county. As we don't have one yet. We've never had manure management plan updates. But we got plenty of manure. Got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple in yesterday, but that was, it's too late for the agenda. Well, anyway, <coughs> sorry it had time for that, but that's what it is, I guess. Okay, if there's nothing else for the good <coughs> the cause, we will stand adjourned at 927. 10 o'clock we do meet with uh, architects and we should be getting some uh, art numbers and you're all welcome to, you're all welcome to uh, uh, stick around for that if you want. Thank you,